Hi, welcome to the part two of this video series. We are looking at some of the real certification questions related to AWS Certified Security Speciality. In this part, we will be covering questions which belong to these categories. Do not forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the like button. For previous questions, refer to the previous parts of this playlist. Let's jump into this question. So you have an S3 bucket and you have your CloudFront and this architecture is being used so that we can uh, avoid DDoS assault. In the past, there was a DDoS assault and we have tried to apply a fix to avoid the DDoS assault. Now there is a concern that users can directly hit S3. That means even if you have given this solution from an architecture standpoint, they can still hit S3. So which option can we use to prevent that? So the first option says, you can, I mean, it will not work because only bucket owner will have access. So what about the end users? For example, you are, you are having an application like Netflix and Netflix uses similar architecture where they have CloudFront for distribution and then your video files are on S3 buckets. So if only the owner would have this access, that means you as a viewer cannot view the videos on Netflix. Hence, option A is wrong. Option B suggests to use OAI. This is the preferred way of avoiding that access, the direct access. It will make sure that the access to S3 bucket only happens through CloudFront. So here you can create a special CloudFront user and call it OAI and associate it with the distribution. So when you do that, end users can access the files only through CloudFront URL and they cannot access the file directly using the Amazon S3 URL. So this looks correct. Now C says that you use IAM rules to provide that access. So always remember, if you have so many end customers or viewers, not IAM rule will not be created for each of those viewers. Usually IAM rules are created for employees. So this solution will not work because creating IAM rules for each customer ain't happening. And the last option says you redirect the access to CloudFront distribution. See, it is already put behind CloudFront. There is no use of redirecting it again. That means the request from CF should go to S3, but if you directly go to S3, then it should say, hey boss, first go to CF. That ain't the right solution. And hence, this is my final answer. Let's look at this question. We need to inspect an IP packet. Have to understand what is there in that packet. So, you know, a courier guy comes to your home to deliver the packet. We need to understand what is inside that packet. You know, the courier guys, when they accept the packet from you, if you have to send it to a destination, they open that and they check for invalid or harmful stuff in there. Similarly, we have to do that with the IP packet and which of like we need to select two strategies which will help us out. You know what? This one is very easy because if you see C, D and E, they are all talking about logs, logs and logs. You know what logs do? They just tell you it's like when the package was delivered, when the package moved to the airport, when it went into the cargo section of the flight, when it reached the warehouse, when it was picked up for delivery and so on. But it, the logs will never tell you what is inside that packet. Similarly, here, all of these three options will not tell you what is inside the IP packet. So I am just left with two options and I need to select two answers so these are my answers so what is this doing is it's a proxy solution and it performs inspection with the proxy software so this is exactly what the courier guys like dhl or blue dart does they have a team they open the packet and have a look at it similarly we have to create a team that team is through a proxy solution or a host based agent that means I can do it myself through the proxy software or I can use an agent to do that. So these are my two answers. Let's look at this question. 
a very easy question it basically says it wants to store the archives for many years and it the archive should be preserved that means it should be immutable nobody should be able to make any modifications to the archive thumb rule time whenever you think about archive always think about glacier okay that is the spot which is meant for storing the archives at the lowest cost and milliseconds access on earth if you want to store something for a long time you put that stuff around the north pole or antarctica s3 glacier is the north pole or antarctica of aws it is a cold storage you can store the archives for a long time and but what about preservation and immutability yes that is achieved using the vault lock policy this ensures that your content is immutable it is write once and read many glacier enforces it to maintain your compliance objectives and hence this is my answer why a is wrong because it is telling you to put it on s3 which is the most costly stuff in the s3 world and then it says is in order to be preserved for a long time you delete the object uh, i mean you deny the delete access so s3 is uh, not a cost effective because the question says cost effective so this is wrong c c is very expensive first you're using s3 which is very expensive second is you're replicating the bucket into another aws region again you're using increasing the cost even if you are storing it in the infrequent access you are still increasing the cost and then you say i will deny the delete object access so you might always think why can't this work this would still work right this will not be cost effective as option b first of all is if s3 themselves gives you option then why will you you know reinvent the wheels and build a bucket policy to deny the request and so on and hence c is wrong and d says move the data to ebs ebs volumes are like very expensive it is expensive than s3 as well plus you will maintain a snapshot which is again i'm going to add the cost so this is my final answer please hit the subscribe button and the like button i would be posting many more such informative content which will help you clear these certifications please do not forget to visit other playlists on this channel which is totally dedicated to help you clear cloud certifications primarily aws azure and gcp this brings us to the end of part two see you in the next part always remember to focus on the concepts and to not try to mug the answers this certification is primarily aimed at security professionals but even if you are aspiring to be an aws architect i would still recommend you go ahead with this certification so in short in this video we looked at how cloudfront oai should be used to avoid direct access to the s3 buckets this was one and then we looked at how we can use proxy and host based agents to see what is inside the ip packet and then we used glacier as a long-term archival solution which is immutable as well if you have any feedback about this content please drop in your comments